I feel very honored uh, to give a short presentation about our research in 2020, uh, slamming in the Netherlands, uh, injecting drugs in a sexual setting. Uh, my name is Leon Knops. I'm part of the Chemsex team of Mainline, together with my colleague, Chef Pelser. And uh, in my job, I'm focused on Chemsex since 2012. Uh, most important motives uh, to start our research was that we saw there's more open communication on dating apps and websites between slammers, and especially since 2019, uh, we get more help requests from guys who were, who were into slamming or who wanted to quit. And we also saw uh, more ex-slammers visiting our two-weekly Gemsex meetings. Um, we get more professionals uh, asking for uh, information and advice, uh, professionals working through the whole country. And we saw the increase in excessive usage. And last but not least, uh, we get signals about the fact that slamming is also popping up in other sex networks. So our research uh, question was, uh, to what extension do men who have sex with men who slam? experience health issues and what are the needs for information, uh, support, prevention and professional help. Uh, we used four sources for our research and striking was the number of respondents on our online survey, 175 men. Uh, we also did 25 interviews with uh, guys who had experience with slamming and we spoke with 10 professionals who work with uh, slammers and ex-slammers, uh, professionals from different uh, disciplines. Um, some personal information about the respondents. Uh, the youngest one was 19 years old and the oldest one 78 years old. Uh, the biggest group was between 40 and 60 years. Uh, as you can see, uh, the biggest group is gay men. Uh, less more bisexual and a couple of them queer. And even, even we did do our best, we couldn't reach any trans or non-binary persons. Um, as you can see, 78% uh, is Dutch and 9% came from other Western European countries. And the biggest group uh, was living in a large city of 19% in a village or rural area. Uh, most striking conclusions about the use of GEMS is that there's much more open online communication about slamming. And we also see the increase and normalization of slamming new psychoactive substances such as 3MMC. And also the use of crystal meth is increasing in the Netherlands. Uh, we also see that slamming uh, happens in other sex networks, for example, sex workers and trans people. And we see, see more overlap between different user groups. Uh, for example, bisexual men who get their experience in gay net, uh, sex networks and share this experience with women. Uh, we also see that many respondents use less or more harm reduction strategies. Most striking conclusions about sexual choices is that bareback sex is still the norm. 81% uh, never use condoms during slam sex. Also, the use of PrEP is increasing in the Netherlands. And you can see that uh, on dating apps, uh, there's much more open communication about the use of PrEP. But there's less knowledge and indifference about hepatitis C. And last one, but very important one, sexual abuse is a huge taboo, 11% ever had experience with sexual abuse. Uh, striking conclusions about health issues is that a growing group of men who have sex with men are losing self-control and more slammers are using alone at home, especially if they use 3 MMC because of the very short rush. And so we also see more slam related issues. We spoke with men who use more than 10 to 20 slams in 24 hours. And guys who want to quit, they see a lot of issues. It's really difficult for them, especially the fear of social isolation. 
because or if you want to quit with slamming, you also have to break with your with your sex network. Most important conclusions about support and help is that there's still a lot of shame and guilt because we are talking about injecting drugs, about the use of crystal meth, about bareback sex and gay sex. There's a lack of expertise among addiction care professionals. And we also see that there is uh, hardly any cooperation between healthcare disciplines. Even it's getting much better in the Netherlands since 2015, our last research, Tina and Slamming. And also underlying uh, mostly gay-related issues aren't recognized. And there's a strong need for a multidisciplinary approach in healthcare. And last but not least, uh, uh, there's a lack of aftercare programs for ex-users in the Netherlands. So uh, we are really happy to present our research, Slamming in the Netherlands. It's available in Dutch and we are still looking for financial support uh, to translate it in English. And I want to thank my colleagues, Chef and Ingrid and Sarah and Tim for their cooperation. And if you want to get more information about our research and also uh, about Chemsex, send an email to chemsex at mainline.nl. Thank you very much for sharing my presentation. Hello everyone, my name is Jas Priansis and I work for MSOC Free Clinic, a social service that provides healthcare for people who use illicit substances. Free Clinic is a low threshold organization with expertise in harm reduction practices in the city of Antwerp. In 2019, me and a few colleagues were aware of a growing community of men that have sex with men that are involved in chemsex practices. However, chemsex can be fun and provide enrichment in the sexual experiences. More and more concerns are rising about the risk that they can go together with chemsex. For us, there was a clear signal that chemsex needed to be highlighted. Men who are involved in chemsex have specific needs and there are no direct answers. Thus, beginning 2020, we started with our pilot project, Chemen, which is now a fully fledged part of Free Clinic. The purpose of Chemen is to give honest information and advice about chemsex. We do counseling, individual or in group, and we also have a needle exchange program. In what comes next, I will tell you how we do that and the experiences that we have since the beginning. First of all, we give information and advice. This can be about everything that has to do with chems, sex or the combination of it. We get a lot of questions about slamming and how to slam. In the group of men that we reached until now, slamming is very common. However, the knowledge about slamming is quite limited. We show how to inject safely and warn for the risks. Most men are surprised about that service. In a lot of healthcare settings, talking about slamming is felt as taboo and they don't talk about it at all. We have a no-nonsense approach about that. We also have a nurse in our team who can take care of possible injuries that are caused by slamming. This can be a good conversation opener to talk about slamming. Most of the men teach each other to slam on him six parties or they are slammed by someone else. This doesn't have to be bad, but we notice sometimes that doubtable injecting techniques are widely spread. We also provide information about substances and the combination of substances that are used. The most common products are 3-MMC, crystal meth, also novastina, JEHB, or erection stimulants. Most of the products are new psychoactive substances, and however they are used uh, continuously, there is little knowledge about the effects and risks by the people who use them. This is also a real challenge for the drug treatment services. Most of them are very familiar with classic drugs like heroin, coke, or amphetamines, but when it comes to NPS, the knowledge about that is very fragmented. We try to give information and advice about where they can find, where people that do chemsex can find help if they need it. But this is a very difficult one. Men have uh, negative experiences with a lot of uh, healthcare centers and they don't feel understood or they, there's only a focus on either drugs or either sex, but it's not integrated or there is no uh, place for harm reduction techniques. Despite of this, we try to work together with other organizations and we try also to stay in contact with the men that come to us. They are always welcome 
also when they are in treatment in another service or center. With Yemen, we have once a week face-to-face -face contacts, but we are also operating on gay dating app like Bullshit, Grinder, or Planet Romeo on different times a week. Men who engage in game sticks are meeting each other mostly online. Therefore, is online outreach a good way to make contact? We answer the questions they have at the moment. Online outreach is not easy. The apps see us as advertising, and we always have to be careful that we will not be banned. We offer counseling for men who want to talk about their experiences. We want to be a safe environment where they can speak freely. There is no condemnation. Topics as anal sex, kinky sex, or uh, sexual assault are not taboo. In the conversations we have, we see underlying feelings of guilt, shame, and traumas. We try to have attention for gay-related complaints. For a lot of men, it's difficult to talk about those, those, these things in a heteronormative society. The fact that I and two other colleagues are gay as well can make it easier to talk about it. It does not have to be a must, but it can bring more understanding, also for colleagues that want more information. It is a great advantage that you are known with uh, slang terms that are used, like Tina for crystal meds, Meow Meow for 4 MSC, and slamming for injecting, or that you know medication like PrEP, uh, Androscatia Magra. In this regard, peer support can be something interesting in the future. Once a month, we also have a group meeting for men that uh, stopped with chemistics or that want to stop with it. Hearing each other's struggles and the feeling that they are not alone can be helpful. Just like MSOC, we also have a needle exchange program. Men can get free materials just as needles, swaps, boxes, and so on. Few men are using this service. In contrast to our clients from the MSOC, the men we see at Yemen are capable to buy their material online or at a pharmacist. Condoms are also free available, but this is almost never used when having chem sex. I'm already at the end of my presentation, but uh, there's a key message that I want to share with you. Chem sex is not something in the march of the society. It is clearly visible, especially in the gay scene. However, it does not get the attention that it needs. This makes that a growing group of men have no access to suitable care or help. With Yemen, we want to make the phenomenon visible, negotiable, and build bridges between key partners. It has a lot to do with breaking taboos and killing stigma. And this has to be the core business for every organization that works with vulnerable people. I want to thank you for uh, listening, and uh, I will be glad uh, to hear if you have questions. Thank you. Thank <laughs> you.